Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. This is going to be a quick video of my favorite stationery slash art supplies. It's a quick collaboration video between myself and Brie from Documented Journey. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out her channel. I'll leave her information down below in the description box. You can subscribe to her and myself as well if you haven't already and yeah let's get on with it this is also a quick disclaimer i wanted to let you guys know that i am filming with natural light i'm right next to my window it's pretty cloudy outside and the light might change here and there okay so for my first favorite art slash stationary supply on my list it's pretty janky looking but this is a kneadable eraser this one is from statler or statler however you pronounce it and for anyone who's seen my videos in the past you will see me regularly sketch out my designs with the pencil with a bit of kneaded eraser on the end again it's not very glamorous it does look like a big old blob of blue tack but it has many advantages the great thing about kneaded eraser is you can mold it into the shape that you want which is something that I normally do um, by squeezing it in between my fingers and that way I'm able to get a more pointed edge, I can get a very narrow tip on it too and that helps me get into those smaller areas particularly on portraits. Also if you haven't tried a kneaded eraser they're really really good for obviously erasing the lines that you need to get rid of but they don't leave behind any crumbs that you need to brush away so it's like mess free this is my second favorite item i definitely can't go past these um not the pencil case itself this pencil case is from the planner society but i just like to store everything in there but for my second favorite supply this is going to have to be the uni pin pens i own a ton of these in different size nibs um to let you guys know this is a 0 0.05 a 0.2 a 0.5 uh, I've got a point three in here. They are really really good for bullet journaling also illustrating and obviously um, Writing in my journals. I really really like the uni pin pen if you haven't picked them up already They are water and fade proof So if you do use with watercolors a lot, which I myself do you will find that the watercolor and contact with water is not going to reactivate the ink in this you're not going to get any murky lines It's not going to blend with your watercolor also, as I mentioned, I use these a lot for my bullet journals. You can check out my latest bullet journaling setup video. I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner. And I have included a few illustrations in my bullet journal setup video. And you will see literally the only thing that I used was my pencil, kneaded eraser and a couple of uni pin pens. Okay, so speaking of journaling, um, I can't go past this particular journal. Obviously, I do bullet journaling as I just mentioned but this is my creative journal. I get a lot of questions about what journal this actually is. And to let you guys know, this is the A5 blank Maduri notebook. I love it so, so much. The paper inside is absolutely beautiful. They are cream colored. And I use so much different media on both sides of each page. Most of the time, I never experience any kind of bleed through. Sometimes there's ghosting, but it, that doesn't bother me at all. I don't think that the paper quality is actually marketed as a mixed media paper, but it was more like a happy accident. So these are some of the pages that are typical in my journals. Um, this is watercolor. This is the uni pin pen. I've got photos, cardstock stickers. I use all different kinds of ephemera and it's basically a creative way for me to document my daily life and do some memory keeping and it's also going to be really cool for my daughter to flip back on and read about when she's a little bit older this is a book that i use every single day without fail um, i do have plenty of creative sketchbook journaling videos on my channel i'll leave a link in the top right hand corner where you can check out my latest january flip through which is going to be every single entry of that month and obviously be on the lookout for the february flip through which will be at the end of this month too i also wanted to let you guys know if you weren't aware this particular illustration was hand drawn by me it's the same girl that features on the front cover here i do have a process video of how i put the cover together because this particular notebook 
um, arrives with a blank cover that you're able to gesso and paint on or put collage bits on. So this particular illustration that I've mentioned, that is also a free printable. So you can head on over to that video. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner and also the description box below. And you can check that out and download it yourself and use it on whatever. I think it's really important to have a good staple everyday item in your stationery and art supply set. Like I said, I use this every single day and I used a few different kind of sketchbooks before I settled on the Midori blank A5 notebook. Once I found this one, it was like an answer to all my prayers and I absolutely love it. As you probably saw in the previous pages, I use so many different kinds of photos and different size photos. Most of those photos has been made possible by this old faithful printer of mine. It is the Canon Selfie CP910 printer and I have used it to death for well over two years now. I don't think it was designed for mass photo printing the way that I have used it, but even so it's a true testament to the quality. I rely on this printer so, so much. Even the packets of ink refills that you can buy to refill this printer come with three different inks and well over 100 sheets of photo paper. I was flicking through my journals a moment ago to show you the journal itself, but you'll see the different sized photographs that I'm able to print out. These two photographs down here are from my Instagram spread, um, so you're going to see the exact same size and dimensions of an Instagram post. And on this page, I was also able to print out this photograph, which is a series of three different photos. And it reminds me of one of those little photo booths that you and a friend might hop into. And yeah, I was able to use my Canon selfie to print that out. Just as a disclaimer though, you're not going to be able to find this particular layout on the Canon selfie itself. <laughs> Um, to obtain a unusual size or a layout like this, I use the app PicFrame on my phone. Then I export it as the file itself and then I send to print. So in reality, this printed out as a 4x6 with plenty of white space around it. And I trimmed off the excess white space and stuck it in. Last but definitely not least are my favorite watercolor sets. I use watercolor probably every single day. I'm not sure if I'm breaking the rules here, but I wanted to include this guy too. I think he deserves an honorable mention. This is an aqua brush or also called a water brush. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick this up, but it does contain water on the inside. And if I squeeze the barrel of the body, the water is going to travel down to the bristles. Um, soak the bristles in the water, then you're able to dip it into the paint pan and go from there. And yeah, this guy is pretty old. You can see that it's very well used and very well loved. It's really, really good for um, travel because it's so portable and the water doesn't leak out or anything like that. So back to the watercolors, these are the Jane Davenport watercolor sets. I do have a third one by her. I think it's, um, let me see if I can find it. All right, so this is the Jane Davenport Glitzy watercolor palette, I believe it's called. Um, if I open that up, it's kind of sad because I haven't actually used this palette very much at all. And it's a real shame because the colors are so beautiful and they have a really nice finish to them when they're dry. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this palette on my desk for the next month or so. And I think that will sort of encourage me to use it and get into the habit of using it more often. And while I was looking for that one, I came across this one, which is the Prima Marketing Pastel Dreams palette. Again, I haven't used this one too much. I'm not really in love with the finish. I find that they kind of dry a little bit chalky, but the colors are really, really nice. The price point is very good too. And same thing as before, I think I might leave this one on my desk so that I do get a little bit more use out of it. But back to these three, these are the three main palettes that I use. This is the Jane Davenport Neutral Set. This is the Jane Davenport Bright Watercolor Set. <laughs> you can see I've used this one a lot. And this is my, this is just a little vintage tin that I got them in, but this is my collection of Daniel Smith watercolors. These are the half pans. And I purchased this from 
uh, Cat's Corner or sometimes she's called Artistic Cat on Etsy and I decided for my first couple of Daniel Smith watercolors that I wanted to get a bit of everything so I've got pinks, oranges, yellows, greens, blues and that's going to give me a great advantage of mixing different shades too. To show you how I use my watercolors and incorporate illustrations into my journals, um, this is one that I did from last month. My husband and I went on um, a date night to a local cafe and we just had some naughty pancake dessert. So I decided to sketch that in. I believe that this is my most recent journaling with me video and I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner so you guys can check that out too. But um, I used my Daniel Smith watercolors. So that's the handsome medium yellow, the Pyrrhal Scarlet and the Thalo Blue. It's a pretty simple illustration. It didn't take very long at all. And I love how vibrant the colors are. And it's also a really effective way to add a cool looking background and just sort of um, get a bit more use out of your supplies. So I think at this stage I'm not necessarily in shortage of watercolours. This is excluding my watercolour pencils, my Jane Davenport mermaid markers which is like a water soluble ink and I think I've also got a few other watercolour products that I have but probably don't use very often. So there we have it you guys, that is my top 5 favourite stationery slash art supplies. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and learnt a little bit as well. If you have any questions about the materials that I've included in this video, please leave a comment down below and I'll happily get back to you. Do be sure to check out the description box because I will leave a list of everything that I've mentioned in this video. And as I mentioned before, this collaboration was between myself and Brie from Documented Journey, so be sure to check out her channel and also her video too. In the meantime, I would love to know your top 5 art and stationery supplies, so be sure to share that with us in a comment down below. Also be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And in the meantime, I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.